Well, hello, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Salisa, also known as the beautiful me. I usually do law of attraction stories. I also do tips and tricks that you can use to help you along your path. But today I'm gonna to be bringing another law of attraction story. It's actually a story about how I manifested a job at <laughs> Airlines. If that's something that interests you, stay tuned. When I manifested my job, I was already a nurse and I was looking for a part-time job that would supplement my income. And so I think some of the same steps that I used in my Law of Attraction, how I attracted a car and $25,000, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it, oh, oops, I'll link it above. In that video, I had eight lessons that I learned in regards to the Law of Attraction, and those same lessons applied when actually looking for a job. So I'm gonna try to incorporate the same lessons into this manifestation story so that you can see how it plays again and again, these same eight lessons when you're trying to attract something that you want. The first step was get clear. And I got very clear about the fact that I wanted a part-time job, but I wanted a part-time job that would be convenient, that could work around my nursing schedule because that's my primary breadwinning job. And I also wanted a part-time job that I can have free flight benefits. I love to travel and in order to do that on a budget, I need flight benefits. So that was what I got clear about. I was gonna find an airline job that was part-time and be convenient, a job that I would enjoy. The next step is believe it's possible. I had to believe that I was gonna be able to get this job. Do I have a skill set that probably an airline could use? Of course. I mean, I'm an educated, you know, individual, but the airlines is known as one of the coveted companies. It's very difficult to get into, it's very competitive. And so I really had to believe that I had the set, the skill sets that they were looking for when I applied for the job, that I had those already. And I began to believe that anything was possible. Fake it till you make it. This came into play because I started to tell everyone that I was gonna get a part-time job and that not only was I gonna get a job, but I was gonna be traveling to Paris. I was gonna be traveling to Hawaii. I wanted to take a trip to Singapore. And I told everyone that I would be traveling to those places because that was important to me. That was where I wanted to go. And I started to envision myself taking flights out of the country and to Hawaii <laughs> um, with my free privileges. I had to fake it until I made it. I didn't have the job, but I could see myself already using the benefits of the job that was to come. And maybe for you, faking it until you make it won't be necessarily like envisioning yourself on the job. It could be that, but maybe you don't know what the office will look like but you know the reason why you want the job. It might be for an increase in income. And so you start to think about how you would actually spend that income. Think about what you would do as far as your budget and how your budget would look like. Creating a check of what you want your bi-weekly pay, paycheck to look like. And after taxes, how much you're gonna bring home and think about how that's gonna provide more money for your family. That's all a part of the fun and that's all a part of faking it until you make it. That also leads directly into the next topic, which was to find your joy. So as I was imagining that I was going on these trips to Paris and that I was going on these trips to Hawaii, I was thinking how fun it would be to be in these cities, knowing that I could afford it and have the money for souvenirs and seeing the beautiful sceneries and tasting the different foods of the culture. I just began to enjoy feeling like I already had these privileges, even though I didn't. Part of faking it until you make it, it runs right in line with finding your joy. And that's exactly what I did. The next step was listen to whispers. Now, in regards to the job, about two weeks before I even found the job that I would apply for, my sister happened to tell me about an interview that she went on where they had to use the STAR method. I thought to myself, I've never heard of the STAR method. Like, what is that? And so I questioned her about it. What is the STAR method? And she said, um, there's plenty of research that when certain types of companies do interviews, they give you situational type questions, which I had had several interviews with situational type questions. I just didn't know there was an actual name for the method, I guess. So she said, whenever they give you a situation question, the S stands for describe a situation and you want to describe a specific situation not a long-winded story but a specific situation that you had to deal with the t is going to be the task that you had to complete the a is going to be the action 
that you took and the R is going to be the result. And so I still didn't quite get that method all the way, but I thought, I wonder why I'm hearing this, you know, because I'm always listening for the whispers. And I knew that I wanted the job and I figured an interview would be coming up soon and maybe this would give me the leg up on the competition. So I started to look at YouTube videos for the STAR method. And there was only a few out there, but it gave some specific examples of how you would answer situational type questions. I took that information and retained it so that I was prepared by the time my interview actually came. That was really truly me just listening to the whisper of my sister talking about the STAR method and being curious enough to dig a little deeper to find out more about it, knowing that I was probably gonna get offered a job, but before I did, I'd have to make it through some interviews. The next step is to release control of the how. And I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna get this job. I just know I continue to monitor the site their hiring site. And finally, about maybe two weeks after I watched the STAR interview method videos and I started and I was envisioning myself flying to, you know, Singapore and Hawaii and Paris and all these places that I wanted to go, I actually saw a position that they posted. It was a brand new position and it was a work from home part-time customer service rep. You actually were able to make your own schedule at home. Doesn't that sound like exactly what I asked for? I was gonna get my flight benefits, I'd be able to work from home, and I could build my own schedule around my nursing schedule. See how it all works out? I released control of the how and just let it find me. But when I saw it, I knew that that was my job. The last step is overcome obstacles. Now, as soon as I applied for the position, I got a call from an outside company that interviews and kind of sorts through applicants. And I used the STAR method to do the interview process. And I sailed through that first phone interview. They said, well, we're gonna schedule you for another phone interview tomorrow with someone from the company. And the next day, they gave me a call and I also sailed through that interview using the STAR method. I think if I didn't know the STAR method though, I might not have been as successful because I didn't know those specific steps that were needed. They invited me to a face-to-face -face interview and they sent me an email that said that I had to print this paperwork and have it signed and bring it with me on the day of the interview. The overcoming of the obstacle came in that the day of the interview, my printer wouldn't work. My sister's printer wouldn't work when I went to her house around the corner to print the paperwork. I waited until the day of. And true, I probably shouldn't have procrastinated, but I still kept my positivity. My sister also told me, just go to the interview, things are gonna work out for you. She said, you have this, you got this job. And it reboosted my confidence in the fact that this job was really meant for me. And when I got there and they asked, did everyone have that paper they were supposed to have in order to be admitted into the interview? I said I had it. But once the lady came to my desk to collect it, I told her my printer had broke that morning and I couldn't get it to print out. She asked me for my name and my social and she went to her office and she printed it for me and snuck it back to me. Through all those obstacles and how defeated I felt on the way there, once I had that pep talk from my sister, I really switched gears and just began to be positive. And when I got there, it all worked out for me. That day, I did a two interview process. First, a group interview, one by one we went. And after that, I had an interview with a the manager. They offered me the job. 3,500 people applied for that job. 25 people were hired and I was one of the 25 of this new pilot program that I feel like had been developed just for me. What we want is always possible. There's different ways to achieve it. That's where releasing control of the how and overcoming obstacles comes in. But there's always a way to achieve the goals that we set our mind to. It's about believing that it's possible, staying attuned to a higher source, finding it and staying in your joy and everything will work out. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this story, please like, comment and subscribe. Remember when you comment and subscribe, it not only helps me, but it helps my video to be shared with others. And this way, maybe they too can be touched by the story. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care.